good afternoon all i think uh, it's the most important part of the session like uh, everyone sitting here is an expert in this sector and definitely the decision makers from the government are present and all these uh, members on the dais and off the dais can give more inputs more insights regarding the growth and development of the rooftop solar sector so more than explaining uh, this kind of thing i'm interested to directly move to the panelists so first uh, i i invite you, uh, you mr prashant vendor regional head adani solar listen very good afternoon uh, i am prashant vendor i uh, take care of uh, southern india market for key accounts and uh, uh, distribution market of adani solar modules uh, based out of bangalore uh, as a adani solar uh, we have uh, 3.5 gigawatt of uh, module manufacturing uh, facility and also we are into monopark uh, cell manufacturing uh, as a good part is that uh, as a company we are uh, focusing from uh, Uh, mg silicon the production of mg silicon to uh, module that complete the supply chain management integration uh, will be from the mg silicon to the uh, end product module we are going to come up uh, in mundra uh, coming to the uh, topic uh, the the uh, rooftop uh, projects rooftop projects i, I uh, unlike uh, ground mount it's very challenging uh, uh segment i can say that because the ground mount is the the clearing the ground and setting up the plant the challenges are different but in rooftop each and every site is a different uh accessing to the roof and uh, uh, uh giving the technology solution estimating the solution and giving the right solution to the consumer is very very important when we are giving the right solution to the consumer and it's equally important that uh, what are the component we are selecting for uh, when consumer is choosing for the rooftop so it's very important what kind of a product and what solution we are offering to the our end users that is very important so as a module part we are uh, uh, very uh, one of the top manufacturer and suppliers in india as well as uh, global product and uh even rooftop one more challenging area what i could see is the one dam uh, part uh, everyone they concentrate on the ground mount one dam the rooftop is a very nascent stage where the industry about 200 kilowatt or 500 kilowatt above people are interested to take up the one dam part here in the uh coming to the uh, like a residential like a 5 kilowatt 10 kilowatt or 50 kilowatt there is a still this uh, area is not addressed and uh, uh, very few uh, startup companies are working on this uh, segment as a well. wind it is very important uh, when i uh, i have been in this industry from last 10 years and uh, i could see many installation has done but uh, end of the day the roof access is not provided and modules are not cleaned uh, on a regular basis when it is not cleaned on a regular basis at least 15 days once the generation which impacts uh, on a higher side so it is a very important part so certain challenges are uh, there in the uh, rooftop segment as a we need to have a clear, clear upcoming ideas where we can like a robotic solutions are offered nowadays uh, residential still it is uh, ongoing there are uh, module cleaning system can be implemented so definitely we all have to work towards this making this rooftop as a successful uh, project for everyone it was uh, great to hear from you and now uh, let's move to the uh, open energy ceo and uh, he is uh, one of the leading epc players in the state of kerala and uh, please uh, first of all uh, thank you so much sir and uh, uh, to be part of this group is uh, very honoring so uh, if you look at uh, the solar market in the last 10 years generally the trend has been of decreasing prices the cost 
of solar modules, inverters, everything has been in a generally decreasing trend. But off late, if you look in the last one year, you can see that the, the module price have gone up, uh, the inverter price have gone up, mostly due to a lot of regulatory tax, uh, customs duty changes in the market. Uh, but if you look at uh, the Kerala market again, uh, it is a predominantly residential market. The real estate prices in Kerala are very high and you don't find the kind of solar farms or utility scale solar installations in Kerala as much as uh, you see in other states in India. So in, the, in this perspective, uh, if you look at it, the residential segment in Kerala, on the contrary, is a very strong and vibrant market. The potential is very, very high even compared to a lot of other states. And I am honored to be part of this uh, occasion, especially in the presence of uh, KCBL director uh, Suku, who is not only just spearheading the, the, the KCB's solar programs in Kerala, but also pushing a lot of electric charging stations across Kerala. It's a phenomenal achievement that Kerala has achieved in the last uh, one year, especially uh, we have, uh, I think, closed around 90 megawatt of uh, rooftop installations, if I'm not wrong. And uh, club together with that, the electric charging stations are also as a discom. In terms of uh, any other state, I think uh, Kerala is doing a phenomenally great job. And uh, much credit has to go to KCBL, especially the director. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, so that is one thing. So in, in Kerala, if you look at it, there is a subsidy program that is going on, one which is directly promoted by KCBL through a tender and embalment. Uh, a lot of installations are happening in the residential segment. At the same time, there was also a national portal which has also opened recently and installations have also slowly started happening and uh, uh, a lot of uh, activity is also expected in that, there as well. Uh, till 2030, I think there's a huge potential for having solar in every rooftop in Kerala. There's a huge market potential. So if you look at a lot of statistics, I personally feel the market for solar is very, very bright, at least till 2030. Uh, just there are around 1 lakh plus houses and 1 lakh plus, uh, 1 crore plus uh, houses and 1 crore plus uh, electricity connections in Kerala, out of which only 7,000 or 10,000 around is only the HT and, you know, all those consumers. Everything else is LT consumers. A vast majority is residential consumers. And uh, there is a huge potential. Um, again, statistics goes like around 40 to 50 lakh houses have uh, good mosaic and, uh, you know, roof, uh, concrete roof and all that. All these are potential solar opportunities that will open up in the years to come. And with all the government central financial assistance and state level support, uh, policy changes in these directions will definitely aid the promotion of solar, especially Kerala being a very, uh, a state with very little economic disparity compared to other states in India. Uh, the economic disparity between the rich and the poor is comparatively low. And there's a lot of uh, foreign repatriation money that comes to Kerala from Middle East, from Western countries and all. And uh, the increased adoption of solar is happening, uh, which is very, very encouraging. But at the same time, there, is, there are some concerns that's also there. Uh, recently also, there has been some regulatory challenges that... Uh, especially in the form of news that is coming up in terms of gross metering, um, especially. But I'm sure uh, KCB as a very proactive pro-renewable energy uh, discom in India itself, across India, if you look at it, the best policies and best uh, discom, which is promoting renewable energy, I'm sure they will take a very balanced and uh, a responsible approach. And uh, yeah, this is what I would like to say. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shia. Now let's move to the next presenter. It's uh, let me invite Mr. M R Narayanan, Chairman of Atex Systems Limited, uh, who is behind uh, this uh, floating solar uh, technology and uh, completed uh, 40 megawatt uh, this year. Uh, let me begin by thanking uh, EQ for uh, giving me this opportunity to discuss about the various uh, problems in the solar and also the solutions. I would like to go taking the cue from 
doctor and Mr. Sukhu. And then how we can think uh, big in future. We all know that the, uh, the Russian war has put the question of the energy security all uh, before us and uh, our Prime Minister Modi's vision is to make uh, India energy secure. So look at the big picture. Now EVs are getting more and more popular, but look at the current uh, automobile sector. We are carrying oil from the Middle East and consuming a lot of energy from the Middle East, bringing it to the Indian uh, refineries, again utilizing a lot of energy and then transporting this, the diesel and petrol in trucks, utilizing a lot of energy. And then it goes to the gas station and then the pumping take place and the car utilizes this energy where the efficiency is very low because current automobile engines are not energy efficient because there is a lot of thermal loss. Now look at the other picture which is taking place now, the electric automobiles, the e-mobility has caught up, where all these wastages are avoided. So I would like to dream big and look at India producing all the energy required under renewables. Because then you don't need to waste any of these energy because you already have the grid and the charging stations comes. Think about the saving of total energy that we can make. So I wish that we come up with a mission and all of us participate in this, in their, uh, whatever they are, panel producers, the inverter producers and various other uh, add-ons to the this whole renewable picture. And the the, uh, from my own uh, company's perspective, uh, we feel that 40% of India's energies would be produced if we utilize all the water bodies in uh, India. And then they can be, and also because we have a lot of these dams in India, where which could be utilized because energy evacuation also is much easier. So my vision is that we grow to such a level where these energies are produced using various forms. And also the other big potential now that is going to come is the offshore wind energy. So we, we have a very bright picture if we can utilize all these forms of energy in terms of uh, various wind, solar, uh, offshore, wave energy and things like that. And look at, look at if these, all these happens we are cutting off all the oil imports and how rich India can be. So with this message, thank you again. Thank you. And now uh, let's move to the leading uh, solar power system distributor, the uh, managing director of Impossibilities Private Limited, Professor Manish. Um, I will start with thanking EQ and uh, I'm privileged to be in company of this eminent panel. Uh, I will share some of my experiences based on our dealings with EPCPRs across South India over the last five years. Uh, technology generally is upgraded to make things easier, but in solar it is uh, happening too, too fast that EPCs are sometimes troubled. Example is uh, the high current rated uh, new solar panels which are coming with 17 amps, 18 amps. Industry was not really ready for it. The solar rooftop projects, especially residential and commercial uh, systems, most of the inverters still operate on 26 amperes, MPPT uh, voltage range or 30 amperes, where let's take the present uh, high current modules. They, they desire 20 amps per spring or uh, 40 amps per MPPT kind of. Uh, so this uh, is one of the challenge that has uh, uh, come up in last uh, couple of months what we are observing. Same way we are seeing a lot of like SPD uh, failures happening in the field both on DC side, on AC side and most of these uh, SPD failures are happening because uh, some of the inverter manufacturers use type 2 SPD 
and uh, some of them even uh, lesser known brands use uh, mov type uh, on board uh, stuff so the industry has to look at uh, these uh, realistic practical problems quite pragmatically and uh, the inverters of future needs to have a combination of like type 2 plus type 1 spd where the like uh, current discharges the, the high surges which presently in the present systems are to handle around 20 k kind of uh, discharges it should uh, go to 40 k or above so this is another challenge another third thing uh, which we have seen that's quite prominent in uh, rooftops especially in a state like kerala where very large roofs are not available you have uh, like a cluster of smaller roofs even if you go to any like uh, probably institution one mechanical department one civil department like that you will have small small roofs of 30 50 100 kw now how to connect all these inverters right now the solutions are either you put individual uh, wifi devices and then where is the wifi router available in each building it may be on the ground floor and your uh, things are on the top floor the connectivity is a challenge you put long cables and uh, then you see that wires and all kind of uh, issues communications are affected so so there has to be a scenario where inverter should talk to inverter to maybe some uh, technology like lora van or some kind of rf mesh is created where uh, different distant building inverters can speak to each other and one of the inverter can speak to the server so another thing uh, related to onm as uh, this is a very important factor for rooftop there has to be kind of 24 by 7 not only monitoring of the system but there has to be a diagnostic report which should be automatically generated and uh, same should be like uh, sent across to the user as a uh, acknowledgement or as a as a alert in real time on whatsapp or on on probably mail or sms because what we have seen is there is some error in the inverter and uh, the end user doesn't go near inverter until inverter is stopped and that error keeps on repeating and uh, such repeated errors okay once they will tend to fail the inverter and we have seen that in all inverter makes not a or b or c so if first time when error comes there is an alert and a person attends to it you can save equipment not only equipment but lot of generation loss so these are some of the practical challenges and i think uh, the inverters of future are going to address uh, these issues so these are uh, some nuggets from my side thank you manish uh, th- thanks for bringing the uh, technical data on the table now now it's, uh, it's a pure uh, discussion on the rooftop uh, installations and i'm interested to uh, hear from mr tejas babu the managing director of tabas energy and i think uh, it will be a continuation to what uh, manish said and how we can understand more about the practical difficulties in the rooftop segment good afternoon all and thank you for eq uh, to give me this opportunity and when it comes to the rooftop uh, especially as fire has mentioned earlier kerala is much of a uh, residential market than the large megawatts built projects and uh, as subhu sir and hari sir has earlier mentioned you know they dream to uh, design the big uh, house with the solar on top from the day first itself so here the bipv importance is coming so when you look at in kerala houses most of the houses they build a house on top of it they will put a steel sheet aluminum sheet or uh, some other sheet or then they do a concrete on top of it put a uh, tile so this is because of our uh, geographical uh, nature so we have to find or the manufacturers has to come up with a solution where solar can be integrated to one of these so that initial investment of the solar can be brought down and the affordability of the solar can be made high, you know much easier to the end customer so this is one of the uh, area i think we all have to read and work and um, uh, on the other side uh, uh, you know there are recently there are newses about gross metering and uh, net metering uh, uh, all those things this actually put the customer a step back you know it forces the customer to you know step back from going, going solar because they are worried about the future so the uh, government should make strong statement and uh, you know uh, saying that solar uh, you know the net metering is definitely going to be available for the residential 
market or the small scale uh, commercial. This, this has to be in a strong way. The government has to convey the message in one sentence or very clear way. Otherwise, you know, people are really, uh, you know, uh, you know, they, they're worried. You know, they will install, they will invest the money on the solar or some other renewable energy, and next day they are losing it. They're, you know, nobody will go for them. If, 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 if I am, I put myself in my customer's place. Then I'll not buy solar. <laughs> Why should I? Because tomorrow I am not getting the net net thing. Then well, I shouldn't be investing. So we, the government has to make a strong statement saying that residential and small scale uh, projects are not, uh, you know, uh, going under the gross net rate. This is one of my things. Okay, I think uh, the point was uh, very clear. Like uh, there is a confusion in the customer uh, mindset. And actually, it was uh, created by the various media reports. People are concerned about their investments, and it's a fact. And uh, uh, mostly in uh, this uh, commercial segment, the first question that we are uh, receiving from the client side is, when will the project be break even? So when they think about the break even point, when they think about the payback, it will make confusions. So I strongly agree with uh, what uh, Tabas and the CEO said. Uh, 